thrilled by a couple of brilliant 10,000 meter races so far. Now the women's 5,000 meters, 12 and a half laps of the track. And for Wayne Halu starts very much amongst the favorites. The world indoor champion over 1,500 meters in Glasgow back in March. Very fast 1,500 meters too. Recently to run a 355. Sifan Hassan. Well, number nine all time is Hassan with 14.13. That was last year. She has a fabulous range, just the former Ethiopian running for the Netherlands, of course. She will be tough to beat here. Hassan recently ran a modest 5,000 as a warm up in Los Angeles. Taye to look out for her, the bronze medalist at 10,000 meters in Budapest last year. She might want to uh, push the pace on her if it slows, but they are looking for a pretty quick pace. The target's uh, time is 14.12, which means they need to go out at a very, very crisp schedule here. It's a big field too, some uh, 21 athletes with uh, the pacemaker Simone Plourde of uh, Canada. Yeah, it's interesting the pace, Tim, and it's, uh, I looked at it, I thought, why 14-12? Yeah, it's not the world record. And then I looked and saw Tyre's best is just high 14-12, and Hassan's best is 14-13. So I presume <laughs> it's been set personal best sort of time for these guys. Yeah, so we're looking for what? About uh, 255 per kilometre, 253 per kilometre through the early stages to uh, get them on their way to head down towards 14-minute territory. Remember, the uh, world record is 14.00.21. Segai, who ironically was beaten just an hour or two ago in that 10,000 meters, setting the world record here at the Diamond League final last September. And that is one of the great barriers yet to come down, and I'm sure it will go this season, the 14-minute barrier for women over 5,000 meters. Chibet, by the way, who won that 10,000 metres, holds the world record for 5K on the roads. She now has a, a brace of world records. One on the roads, one on the track after an astonishing 28.54. One of the ironies, Steve, is that uh, the shoe technology advances in the last uh, few years have made road times over 5,000 and 10,000 metres now potentially faster than track times. And that would have been unheard of, what, six, eight years ago. Yeah, you're not allowed to wear the same road shoes on the on the track, and um, you know, there's new shoes are coming out literally almost every month. Um, but um, they have to comply with the various rules set by World Athletics. So you take someone like Safan Hassan, who will be doing a lot of her training on the road, marathon runner these days. She was uh, fourth, wasn't she, in Tokyo earlier on in the year, and making the transition back to track for her is is an interesting. I wouldn't say dilemma for her now, but I think she, she, she needs to work out, is she going to be good enough? I think today will be a really good test for Savannah Sam. You've talked about Sigai, we saw her get beat by Chebet. They're running so fast on the track and the roads, and Sifan in, in a marathon world, can she still contend over 5,000 and 10,000 on the track? Well, she's a, a four from the back of the moment, Hassan. She set off very, very steadily. Perez Hernandez in the women's triple jump, early stages. Silver at the world recent World Indoor Championships held in Glasgow and a bronze at World Outdoors. Oh, that's a good opening effort. I was just about to say, will, will we get things warmed up early on here? That's an excellent opening effort from the Cuban. Really good stretch through that second phase then, held it together into the pit. That's not too far off the 15-meter mark, and that's going to really set the stall up. No Rojas this year, out for the season, won't be at the Olympic Games. So who's going to take up the title? 14.73. Well, they come into the home straight for the third time. The uh, pacemaker, Lourdes, just beginning to ease away from this 5,000-meter uh, field. And uh, they will go through 1,000 here. As I said, we were looking for around around 253 something like that and she goes through in what about 250 a pack about 10 meters down that was a 67.7 hassan who is uh, right at the back of that pack in about 15th place got herself in a little bit of trouble uh, barged into somebody about 300 meters back and that is one of the problems of course with being a long way back having a lot of athletes in front of you is you've got athletes who are struggling in the early stages and hassan there she is you see that second pack of five right in the center of the picture Hassan is the back of that group. And at the moment, there are gaps developing, and Hassan 
is a long way behind the uh, leaders. I mean, I'm sure she will move up. This could be a sort of Mo Farah style uh, tactic from Hassan, who in the early stages just makes sure she's within reasonable reach of the leaders, and then will move up in the third quarter of the race and be ready to strike over the last two or three laps. But at the moment, she's got a lot of running to do, Steve. And remember, she came second in the uh, Tokyo Marathon back in February, I think it was, with 2.18. You know, she's got this incredible spread of 156 for 800. Fabulous speed at the marathon as well. But you do wonder whether or not at some point those, that marathon training will take its toll and affect her trackability. Yeah, I'll come back to that in a second. We're just going to go back to triple jump. After that opening, 14.73, can Shanika Ricketts respond? Ricketts, like many of the others, be thinking, is this a year I can take advantage of Rojas not being around over 15 metres last year in this meeting for the very first time? This is her attempt, to, and it's a decent attempt, but not going to threaten the lead, but I was going to say her attempt to at least get on terms early on with Perez Hernandez. Had a no jump in the first round. Ricketts full of potential. Silver at the World Championships, two occasions. And the Diamond League final last year, finally over 15 metres. And when you do that, you then the belief that you can carry on doing it. But 14.24 today so far. Well, this pack of 11, Steve, sorry, just to put things in perspective, this pack of 11 have got about a 20-metre lead over a pack of four, which includes Hassan. And Hassan now moving through, maybe has recognised that with, what, some five laps done, she's too far behind that lead group. She's going to have to cross that divide between the two. There she is, just leading that quartet. Yeah, and I, I, we, when you were talking about it, Tim, I'd been watching her in the binoculars, and, I, and I, she doesn't look very comfortable to me. You know, Sifan isn't... isn't you know, she's a lovely runner in terms of, her, of course, her ability and everything, but she also has a way of running that you sort of know when she's enjoying it, running OK. Doesn't look like that today. However, I've <laughs> fallen into the trap, as many have over the years, including the London Haven't Marathon, all, yeah, of yeah. going, oh, poor Sifan, look what's happened. And she'll just keep working and dragging herself back. But, you know, let's accept where she's at, as I said right at the very beginning. You know, this I think this is a crucial race for her to help us set up the season and decide what she's going to do at the Olympic Games. But I, I'm surprised that she's this far back this early. She's working hard. Well, she's gradually closing that gap now. One or two athletes peeling off the leading group and uh, giving her sort of like little islands of success. As she passes each of those, she'll gradually, hopefully, claw back towards this main group, which is, what, two, four, six, eight, nine athletes strong now. They go through with seven laps to run. She's got plenty of time, as uh, Sifan has said. But she's, uh, well, she's, now she's tucked in behind those two in the second group as we see the leaders there. And uh, you're right, she doesn't look that comfortable. Gabriel Salama leads with Tae and Halom and Mebratu and Hailo. It's a, an Ethiopian fest up front at the moment. Yeah, that, that's not a gap that's going to be easy to close uh, the way she's running at the moment. She's making efforts, but you know, that's going to be really, really hard because these women are running around about 14, 20 pace at the front and they'll they'll probably pick up in the latter stages. I mean, having said that, uh, Taye for me, is the, is, the, is the kind of form athlete of this group at the moment, but there are others who have the potential to go close to 14, 20, maybe even below here, given the pace that's been set up at the look how hard Sifan Hassan. You can see what's happening there, Tim, is her brain's going, this is not where I should be. I've got to try and get back there, but she's either not fit enough or, you know, it's not, it maybe let them get away too much, and she's going to have to work incredibly hard to get anywhere near closing this. That's a tall task. Well, that is a big gap. It's, what, 20 metres between Hassan there, left of picture, leading that second group and the uh, leading group of nine. Don't let's forget that back in 2019, she won the World Championships at 1,500 metres and an astonishing 351. It was nearly a world record at the time, and then, uniquely and almost unbelievably won the 10,000 metres a few days later. That was a unique double, but that was five years ago, and we're looking at an athlete who since then has stepped into the marathon arena and is very successful. She's won London and produced many fast times, but only two races this year, Sifan Hassan. That was the Tokyo Marathon, as I mentioned. That was a 2.18 run, and then a, a modest 5,000 in Los Angeles a couple of weeks ago, 14.58. So I don't know if she's got the speed in her legs yet, Paris still a long way away, though. 
This is Jasmine Moore in the triple jump, fifth of the world indoors. But 15-12 indoors. It's actually the first woman to have jumped seven meters and uh, 15 meters indoors. Incredible performance, Jasmine Moore. Such a great talent. She's still only 23 and has uh, a bright future ahead of her. Just trying to get some consistency into her jumping. Just checking into the board there, losing a little bit of speed going in. So it's not going to hit the 14 meter mark, but. As I said, when you know you've jumped 15 metres, I said it before, you have to have the confidence to think it's there. But, yeah, for me, just checking in the last three, four strides there. 13.97 moves or improves a little bit. Just well, what, sorry, Tim, just to come back to what you were saying there. You know, you, you can see she's trying really hard now. When you look out on the track, she's trying, but that's just not changing that gap. Well, and the I, problem is, Steve, I've just, while we were covering yeah. that triple jump, they went through 3K in 8.40. It was a 247. So that lead group are accelerating. Yeah. So for her to accelerate and catch them, she's gonna have to put in a sort of double acceleration. This lead group for me, you know, it's Taye, we, we know is in great form, is looking itchy there though. She wants to move this on. And I think you know, when you look at the likes of the youngster Halom in there, and, and Taye always knows that it's hard for her on the last lap. And she's got these youngsters like like Halom, who's got great 1500 meter pace now as well. The 18 year old who surely is going to be yet another of these great young Ethiopian athletes. He's got so many to choose from at the moment. Goodness knows who's going to end up representing them in the 5,000 in the Olympic Games. But nonetheless, for Hassan right now, she's watching them disappear. Four laps to go, just under four laps to go for this uh, lead group. It's still, uh, what, some seven strong now. It's gradually whittling down. They are peeling off the back of it gradually, one by one, because they are maintaining a pretty useful pace. And now uh, we are looking at something, as Steve said, down around 14.20. That is very quick. Anything under 14.30 is super fast. Taye here, 24-year-old, fifth in the uh, Olympic 5,000 metres back in Tokyo 21. She's very experienced, came fifth in the Budapest 5,000 last summer. May not be confident about her, uh, her finish, although she is an 8.19 3,000 metre runner here. She's got a lovely sort of galloping style there hasn't she left a picture leading this group looks very comfortable at the moment but these six away now and surely you never say never in this game especially with athletes of the caliber of her hand but surely she can't close that gap now no since they come down the straight they'll see three laps to go and she's 50 meters down quite a shot though there she's extreme top left to picture and uh, see fan Hassan here a subpar performance, you have to say. I mean, he, he, Steve, if she knew things weren't going great, you have to admire her for stepping out and having a go. You know, and that was mentioned by um, Jakob Ingebrigtsen yesterday. He said, look, you know, if I'm not in the best shape possible, so what? I need, I feel I need to come out and race. You can't expect to be 100% every time you race. I agree, but by her high standards, this isn't just, you know, we, we might not get to see the best of Ingebrigtsen later, but, but this is a long way off where Sifan Hassan would want to be. So like you, I'm a little surprised that she's come out. But it's great to see her here, 2.53. They've slowed at the front a little bit, Tim. This is the issue for Taye now. You know, when you get into this part of the race, she's got them sitting on her shoulder again. She knows that she just doesn't quite have the kick. She's so strong. Has to make it a bit of a long run from home. Probably happy she's getting a little bit of help here, but this is going to end up with a burn-up over the last couple of laps, probably mostly on the last lap as well here. But it's going to be quick. Look at Ty, looks comfortable, doesn't she? But she's waiting, just waiting. Hayalu's got pace. Uh, halom has got pace, the youngsters. So Ty has got to do something. Gebre Salama held the lead. Ty comes past it. Gebre Salama, the 23-year-old, was the second in the World Cross Country last year down in uh, Australia came fourth in the World Half Marathon Championships in uh, Riga, Latvia, back in October. She's a strong athlete, has got good speed. She won the Razel Kaima Half Marathon back in February in 65-14. She's got enormous strength, the athlete there in that orange and white strip in second place, Gebre Salama. Taye, likewise, may not have the confidence about her finish. These two pushing it on strongly and trying to just break those behind them who may have better finishing speed. It's a classical middle long distance clash. Well, when you've got the world indoor champion at 1500 meters sitting behind you, you've got the young 18 year old in there as well. Uh, Halong just hanging in there with a good 1500 meter time. Then you know that you know, that's, that speed in their legs is going to be a massive threat on the last lap. So Taye though is so strong. She's good at this, likes to wind up. Hayelu's getting a little bit closer now just uh, sensing the danger. 
the bell this time. Still five athletes there, although they're beginning to suffer. This is where Taye and Gebre Salama have got to use their strength. But Hailu, Frawani Hailu, the world indoor champion from Glasgow just a few few weeks back. We know she's in fabulous form, ran 3.55 in Los Angeles just uh, last week. She's sitting there in third place. Ironically, she looks quite a flat-footed runner. She's not one of these high knees galloping type runners. But Hailu finding a bit of daylight on the inside there, or at least she could have done. There was plenty of room down the inside as Gebre Salama hits the front, 200 meters to run. Now the strong runners in one and two, the speeds are in third. Have they eased the speed out of her legs over these last four or five laps? It looks like they have. And we have a battle now between Gebre Salama, Sigi Gebre Salama, the half marathon specialist, the stronger of the two. But has she got the legs against Taye here? It's a real battle through the last 50. Taye on the outside. Gebre Salama makes it down to strength and takes it by a meter. 14-18, the fastest time in the world this year. Hailu coming home, a tired third there. She just had the sting run out of her brilliantly by that leading pair over the last couple of laps. And Hassan, about whom we thought so much of this race would be uh, about. Well, she's uh, way down. This is a, a fabulous run, though. 14.18, it's the fastest time in the world this year by some eight seconds. Well, it went one way, then the other, didn't it? Ty must have thought she had it, but because both of these are using strength rather than pure speed, it is just literally that strength to the line. And uh, literally in the last five meters, she gets ahead. It was an interesting race, because you, you were saying, Tim, you know, we've got these great young talents in Hayalu, and Haylom, who've got the you know, the shorter distances, we know how quick they can be. But when you get tired, and that's what Taye had to do, you know, they just gradually, the last three laps, keep the pace hard, keep it going. And there's no great sprint here, it's just that these two have got the strength to keep pushing on. And I think Taye thought she had this as she entered the home straight. Again, she doesn't have great acceleration at all. And the two of them now are just flat out. And now it's just, you know, what can I give here? What can I give? There's nobody's got anything to, in terms of acceleration, it's just trying to maintain, and then all of a sudden, Gebre Salam gets ahead. Great race, and as you said, best in the world this year. So Gebre Salama, the perhaps a surprise winner here. First six home in the women's 5,000 metres then from Ethiopia. Sifan Hassan, the first non-Ethiopian for the Netherlands, finishing in seventh place in 14.34. Back to the drawing board for her, but we don't know what she's doing in training. Confirmation of that win for Gabriel Salamra, world lead and a world under 20 record there.